Those of you who have just tuned in, we have breaking news. It appears that the massive search for the missing heiress, Miss Sheridan Crane, is finally over. Officer Luis Lopez Fitzgerald of the Harmony Police Department has recovered a body from the ocean, quite possibly that of his sister-in-law, Miss Sheridan Crane, who was brazenly snatched from her own home just weeks ago. The newly married Miss Crane was pregnant at the time of her kidnapping. What we don't know is whether she or her baby have survived this ordeal. Is it true? Does Louise find Sheridan? I can't believe it, folks. We have the first live interview with the husband of Miss Sheridan Crane, who's only now just found out the news. Tell us, Mr. Lopez Fitzgerald, how does it feel knowing that your wife's body's been recovered by your own brother, no less? Hey, leave him alone. Can't you see he's a wreck? Mother, Dios, please. Let Sheridan and the baby be all right. She has to be, Mama. She has to be. Boy, did you see the way Pilar hightailed it out of here when she heard the news on the TV? Shh. Be quiet, Mother. Okay, maybe we can see Luis with the body. <laughs> well, that's what I call must-see TV. We're back to you live from the Harmony Wharf, where it appears that the body of Miss Sheridan Crane, Lopez Fitzgerald, has finally been found. The question is whether she's alive or not. Of course she's dead, you idiot. No one can survive underwater that long. You had better hope you are right. Because if she is able to string three words together, they're going to be Bethy, murderer, Wallace. Okay, that is ridiculous. She, she didn't even know that I was involved. Contrary to popular belief, not all blondes are dumb. If she lives, she is gonna nail your mousy loser self so royally. Oh, Missy, you're not gonna know which way is up. Nobody can survive that long. She has to be dead. Thank God. I was hoping it's not too late. No! What is it? Charity. It's... It's death, Miguel. It's come to get Sheridan. Just tell me, Doctor. How's my wife and my baby? I just want you to know that we did everything we could, Ethan. And nobody should have to choose between saving their wife's life or that of their newborn child. It's a terrible Sophie's choice that we ask you to You're... make. What are you saying? We spared no effort in trying to save both lives, but you understand that this was an extremely precarious pregnancy from the beginning, fraught with complications. For God's sakes, just tell me. She's dead, Ethan. I'm sorry. Maybe now, my motherless child, how am I going to do right by my baby? Breathe. I'm going to help you. Okay, I'm going to take care of you both. We're going to be a family. My family is Gwen and my child. What am I going to do without my wife? Ethan. I, I'm, I'm sorry, you misunderstood. Your wife is not dead. 
But you said... She's that she... in very critical condition, but she's still with us. All right, I don't understand. Why, why did you just say that she was dead? The baby was a little girl. She didn't make it. That little girl? They're still so far out. Damn this fog. I can make out Luis, but I can't see if Sheridan's moving. Please, God, she has to be okay. We're live with the husband of Miss Sheridan Crane. Tell us, Mr. Lopez Fitzgerald, how does it feel knowing that your wife's body has finally been recovered? Did you stop saying her body? Of course. Of course, our viewing audience understands that one of the first stages of grief is denial. But get the hell out of here, or you and your cameras are going in the water. You've just witnessed an amazing, emotional outburst from friends and family of Miss Sheridan Crane. I don't think Miguel can get that cutter to Luis in time. We've got to get a small boat out. Mijo, Luis will find a way to get to Miguel. Mama, there is no time. Hank, are you with me or not? Come on. I'm with you. Cuidado, mijo. The last thing you need to see right now is how much Luis loves your Sheridan. Coming to you live with the biggest story since O.J. Simpson, Sheridan Crane's husband and close family friend are headed out to sea to help with the rescue of the missing heiress. That is, if she can still be rescued. You know, unless Bonnie's got gills, she's got to be dead as a mackerel. Get it? A mackerel? <laughs> Deep blue sea? <laughs> Only you would think that's funny. Boy, if I were you, I'd get down on my knees right now and I'd start praying to whatever twisted deity you worship and asking him to, to keep you from spending the rest of your life in prison because that is where you and my pathetic daughter are going if Sheridan lives to tell her grisly tale. Miguel, can you bring the cutter in any closer? Yeah, I'm trying, but the current keeps pushing me back. Look, just hang on. What did you mean death was about to take Sheridan? I can see it, Miguel. It's a, she's about to die. Who's that? Uh, it's Antonio and Hank. They have a smaller boat. Hey, you guys! Let's see if you can get any closer. What's wrong? I don't know. Just die. Police! Swim towards me! Bring Sheridan to me! Doing? Doesn't matter, just pray he gets her on board. Go away! You have to go away! Who is she talking to? She can't mean Louise. Let's go. There are now. Yeah, for crying out loud, you'd think <gasps> Missy Sheridan was important. Oh, she was important, you idiot! She was rich, beautiful, beloved, America's Princess Die! <gasps> you do know what that means, huh? When they catch the persons responsible, don't you? Okay, quiet, Mother. They're trying to see if they can use the telephoto lens to make out Luis. <gasps> what do you know? What do you know? El Hunko is getting Sheridan into the boat. Amazingly, our cameras are allowing us to see what's happening a mile out to sea. It appears that Officer Lopez Fitzgerald has pulled Miss Crane onto the police department vessel and he's... Yes, folks, he's performing CPR on Miss Crane. He's performing CPR. Could this mean she's still alive? <gasps> Oh, with a love that strong, I wouldn't be surprised. I told you, I told you those two were destined for one another. Missy, through all your hopes, 
and dreams are going to hell in a handbag just like you. You're the one that's going to rot in hell, Mother. Uh, I don't know, Bethy. You know, I'm starting to get nervous around here. I, I think it's time we packed up and hit the road. Easy. I'm going to go over there. Don't, Antonio. Hey, she's my wife, and I want to be with her. Your brother's a cop. The fewer distractions he has right now, the better her chances. You have to trust he knows what he's doing. Well, get this damn thing started. Please don't take her. Just go back to where you came from and let her live. She didn't die. We had a little girl. Precious little girl. She can't be gone. Ethan, we did everything we possibly could. I'm so very sorry. My wife, is she conscious? She doesn't know yet. The nurse is going to kill her. She wanted this, uh, this baby so much, I don't know how I'm going to tell her. With, um, care and tenderness, I hope. It's going to be hell for her. I mean, if I, if I can't accept this, how is she? Time, Ethan. Time is the greatest healer. And you try to focus on the positive, thanks to the terrible decision that you had to make. There's every hope that your wife will pull through this. Physically, you mean? Time heals lots of hurts. When I told you to save Gwen, I it didn't mean I could bear losing my child. I understand that. Your wife will, too. I don't know about that. But I, uh, I want to see her. I need to be there for her when she wakes up. You've done enough, miss. Ethan needs me, doctor. Ethan needs his wife, and his wife needs him. And I asked you earlier to leave the hospital, and I suggest you do it now. A miracle if there ever was one. Sheridan Crane, heiress to the Crane fortune, is alive after a harrowing ordeal. Let's roll the tape and show our viewers this most incredible moment. <coughs> what did I tell you, huh? His love saved her life. Shut up. Mother, shut up. It can't be. She was underwater for, like, forever. Sharon's alive. Party's over. What you gonna do, Missy? No, we are. 
We gotta get out of here, Bethy, before a blondie comes too, starts shooting off a big mouth. I'm gonna, I'm gonna grab my stuff. They are coming for you, Missy. How where are you gonna go? I, I, I'm warning you. Shut the hell up. Ooh. I wouldn't be using those swear words. Not in front of the little baby. Well, you know, of course it really doesn't matter now because the baby's soon gonna be reunited with his real mommy. It's not gonna happen. Oh, no? What do you think the first words out of Sheridan's mouth are gonna be when she wakes all the way up, huh? I want my baby. So you enjoy your little stint here with motherhood. You know, your dreams of living a happy life with Luis and the little drooler here. <gasps> They're finito. But Sheridan, Sheridan is alive. <laughs> and you are going to wish you were dead. No, no, it's not over. It can't be over. Okay. Did you let us through? Officer Lopez, let's go. Out of the way. You're Sheridan Crane's husband. Tell us what's going through your mind right now. You know what? I'm going to knock your block off if you don't get out of the way. Do you have any idea who kidnapped your wife, Antonio? She needs medical attention. What about Give your baby? Some... As you can see, the brothers Lopez Fitzgerald are trying to get through a crowd of reporters to the waiting paramedics. We assume they'll be taking her to Harmony Hospital, where, God willing, she'll regain consciousness and be able to answer the questions we've been asking ourselves for weeks. Namely, who took Sheridan Crane from her own home and why? We still don't know the status of her baby, whether or not Miss Crane is still pregnant, or if she's given birth, where that infant child might be. We'll meet again, Charity, sooner than you think. Charity, hey, come on. Got a pulse. You better stay alive before we put her in the ambulance. George Covey, News Let's 1. Did water. I just hear you say she's got a pulse? How long do you think she was in the water? Hey, Ma'am, how long does it take for a person to drown? Mr. Lopez, what do you have to do? Who do you what think about did this to your wife? Officer, do you think you'll ever apprehend the person or persons who did this to your sister-in-law? Yeah, you're damn right. I'm going to find out whoever did this. Come on, Betsy. we got to get out of here. Now, whoever you are and wherever you are, I'm gonna hunt you down and make you pay for this. That's a promise. Angels in heaven! My wicked daughter is finally gonna get hers! Yes! You don't understand. I love Ethan. And he loves me. I am not interested in the intimate details of your sordid relationship. No, it's not sordid at all. Okay, he is hurting, and I'm the only one who can comfort him. My patient, Mrs. Winthrop, is my first and only priority. And you are potentially harmful to her health, and that's all I care about right now. Gwen is not even conscious. She's not going to know I'm here. I just need to be with Ethan in Call his terrible me loss. old-fashioned... But Mr. Winthrop needs to be with his wife right now. You think I'm a monster, don't you? All I know is, is that my patient has suffered enough. And she has more pain coming her way. Or do you not even care how she's going to feel? Of course I care. I mean, do you really think I wanted this to happen? I would have given anything for that baby to have survived. Ethan and I weren't even supposed to see each other in Los Angeles. If I see a fate, it throw us back together. You see? We love each other. And the only way that we can be happy is to be together. Nothing should ever come between our love. Not even Gwen being pregnant. And he thought it would be best to Hi. keep it from Gwen so he wouldn't upset her and jeopardize her pregnancy. Oh, this is so much better than being at the hospital. Yeah, look, you know, I was, uh, was thinking about that. You know, Dr. Abel said that you should probably stay at the hospital another night. And I think I should take you back. No, no. 
Ethan, I am exactly where I belong. Right here with you, my handsome husband. When she found out and she confronted me. Ow! You bitch! I didn't mean to fight with her, but she was saying all these horrible, untrue accusations. I can just imagine the lengths that you went to to follow us out here. What, did you spy on us in harmony? Did you tap our phones? What? No. What? When? No, that you got it all wrong. No, you are the one who's got it all wrong, sister. When are you going to get it through that thick head of yours that Ethan chose me over you? Ethan loves me, not you! What gets to you, Gwen, is knowing deep down inside your husband is in love with another woman. Your husband is in love with me. So I swear, I never meant for this to happen. I swear it. Well, it did. And now I'm asking, no, actually, I'm insisting that you respect the privacy of my patient and her husband. Have you no decency at all? That phone call from Europe you were waiting for? They're on the phone. What are you still doing here? Haven't you caused enough pain already? You trusted me and I let you down. I not only betrayed you, I, uh, I betrayed our beautiful little baby girl by giving in to temptation with Teresa. I wanted to protect you, and I ended up hurting you in the worst possible way. I, I don't know how you're going to survive it when you find out that our little girl is dead. For as long as I've known you, you've, you've always wanted a daughter. I remember you telling me that you would do exactly the opposite, everything Rebecca did in raising you. Let me tell you something. Rebecca must not have made too many mistakes because she created you. And you, you're, you're perfect. You're strong and you're beautiful and you're you're brave i just i don't know how any mother can endure the loss of a of a child or her dream but you know it wasn't just your dream i wanted this baby i wanted us to be a family i swear to god i did I, mean, I, I had these, I had these fantasies about you and I watching her grow up. You know, her first steps and her first words, and you've been teaching her the constellations in the sky. And now that's not gonna happen because of my unforgivable behavior. Help me find a way to make this up to her. Oh, Mr. Winthrop. I I'm sorry, I, I didn't know you were here. I don't understand. What... Don't tell me. They, uh, they wanted me to come and get her. My little girl is in there. Ethan does need me. No, he, I, I just can't walk out on him in the middle of the worst crisis of his entire life. He needs my support now more than ever. Especially while Gwen's still unconscious. I'm sorry. Look, um, I'll come back. That little girl? 
our innocent little baby. How am I supposed to tell her? How am I supposed to tell her that the baby is dead? Okay, obviously, you're not in any shape to do your unpacking, so I'll throw some things in the suitcase, then we're gonna tear on out of here and never look back! I told you you would never be able to keep that baby. <laughs> Luis is gonna find Sheridan. And then he's going to come back here and he's going to snatch that baby right out of your arms so it can be raised by its real mommy and its real daddy, not some psycho wannabe. You're wrong, Mother. It's not going to happen. I'm going to get Louise and keep my baby, too. Is she, is she stabilized? For the moment. We're taking her to the hospital right now. Oh, Eve, thank goodness. I got here as soon as I heard. I'm going to ride into the ambulance with her. Good. Eve, is she going to make it? Too soon to say, Antonio. Oh, sorry. Only one of you can ride with us. Well, I'm her husband. Come on, let's go. Louise, hey, thanks for everything. I'll take over from here, okay? Yep. Hey, right, come on. Not now. Listen, I need to know whether she's going to make it or not. Well, I wouldn't tell her husband this, but if you ask me, it'll be a miracle if she pulls through. Isn't modern medicine a marvel? They can save just about anybody these days, especially somebody with a will to live. And that's what Sheridan has, don't you think? Especially with a handsome man who adores her and a sweet little baby. Just get, get away from my baby. You stay away. Check out your soulmate, Charlie, huh? <laughs> She never was wrapped all that tightly to begin with. Bethy. Bethy. That baby is not yours. That baby is Sheridan's. And Luis is going to come rat a tat tat at that door and take him. There'll be no more flowers from him, Missy. Only handcuffs and ankle cuffs. So you have got to say goodbye to that little baby now. No, 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 no. Nobody's taking my baby. He's mine. Shh. Eva, what's she doing on the way up? Well, she's still with us. So what's the prognosis? I wouldn't even venture a guess at this point, Louise. Well, do we have any idea how long she was in the ocean? No, not yet. All I can think is that the temperature of the water slowed down Sheridan's system to the point that she didn't drown, but her, her vitals are very, very weak. Well, what the hell does that mean? Eve, I just want to know the odds. Well, I can't tell you that, Louise. You're just going to have to be patient. Damn it. Hey, I'm going to get you some coffee to warm you up. Okay, thanks.
told you you'd be seeing me again. You just didn't expect it to be quite this soon, did you? Oh, wait. Sheridan can't do that. Get a temperature up, it's regulate a heartbeat. Dr. Russell. Nothing anyone could have done. I had so many dreams for this baby. I told Gwen it wouldn't matter if it was a boy or girl, but the truth is, I dreamed it. I dreamed it was a little girl. A little tiny beautiful little princess that would help teach me what life was all about. <laughs> There's so many things I wanted to do with her. For her and because of her. I'm so sorry. I wish I knew what to say. You should not be here. If she wakes up. No, I'm going to leave before then. Ethan, I am. I just wanted you to know that you're not alone. Patrice, I know I'm not alone. She is here with me. Okay, now you have to go. I am not going to leave. She can't see you. She has been through enough already. She doesn't even know that her baby is dead. Will you please just go? But how can I leave knowing you're hurting? Because I asked you to. You and I aren't important. Only Gwen is. Next time Officer Louise comes a knocking, he's gonna be taking you away with him. And I am not talking romantic weekend getaway. Oh no. Why would Betty care about that? No, I am talking about a one way ticket to prison. And that is if you are lucky. Because if Sheridan dies, it's gonna be the electric chair. Mm. Oh, leave her alone, old woman. Can't you see she's upset? No, no, come on, honey. We gotta make tracks. I gotta, I gotta get out of this madhouse. Come on, Bethy, we gotta go. Nobody's gonna take my baby. All right, all right. We're gonna take the kid with us, but we gotta do it now. I won't, I won't let anybody take my baby. Nobody touches my baby except me. What is it? Uh, death is here, Miguel. I know it sounds weird, but I've seen him before up close, and he's here, and this time I think he's going to take Sheridan. <laughs> Charity, I think that maybe you're just letting your fears get the better of you. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's got to tell her family. Do you want me to? No. No. It's my job. 
I just don't know how I'm going to break it to them. How is she? Is she going to make it? I can't believe it. I really had my baby. Oh, it's a pink blanket. It's a little girl. Although I haven't discussed it with your father yet, but why, why is the blanket up over your face? What is wrong with these nurses? Teresa, please, I need time with Gwen to tell her the horrible news and do my best to get her through it, okay? That is something we have to do together by ourselves. But she might not wake up for a while, and then, Ethan. And then again, she might wake up at any time, so I want you gone by the time her eyes are open. But Ethan, I... Teresa, always... damn it, please. I can't have you anywhere here when she hears the worst news of her life. Oh, my God! Gwen. My baby! My baby! My baby! 